If there is a word to describe the first half of 2024, then I will definitely call the past five months the festival of behind the scenes. From the fourth planet, Godzilla vs. Kong, Kung Fu Panda to the sand dunes. Looking at it from afar, we have Inside Out 2 and Quiet Place Day 1, which is eagerly waiting for the hot summer. While Deadpool is also ready to drop all the bombs in July, a tight schedule of faces has already made some noise. Unwilling to lose to anyone, the Death Stranding has also opened after nine years to welcome the craziest monsters back to the wild. This time, the responsible soldier is no longer Max Dean. Instead, the audience will witness the youth of a beloved character, Furiosa. So what happened to make her captured by the Citadel and become a soldier of the undead? What is the story behind the sword and the cold face? All will be answered in two hours of the unwavering chase. First of all, being a part of the brand Matt Max, you have to be crazy enough. So did Furiosa recreate the tense feeling that Fury Road did? To be honest, the new spirit of George Miller has shown 80% of the craziness compared to the guy who debuted in 2015. It's still the sound of VH gum engines roaring, the old soldiers avoiding the sand cars crashing into each other for each gas leak. Furiosa, a Matt Max saga, proves that the aesthetic of George Miller is still something unique. He continued to create old machines, a way to fight when the audience has to clap their hands. For example, like the Autobots, they play tag when they fight. Or the easiest one is the old horse-drawn carriage of the romantic and humorous era of Dementors, played by Chris Hemsworth. They are unreasonable, but very stylish, a style that only George Miller has. However, we will come back to the burning scenes later. The world in the film also takes advantage of the good space of the previous part to develop because the story takes place in front of the events in Fury Road. The film represents cities that have only heard of before, such as the Gas Town, Gas Town, or Bullet Farm. A sufficient number of survivors are also added to the story. The rest are mostly influenced by the story. In particular, we are also told in detail about the activities in the city of Immortan Joe, the white boy, from the way he milked women to how he deals with other cities. In general, there is nothing to explain in the first part, so Furiosa will try to fit in there. So, although it can be enjoyed as an independent work, having certain knowledge about Matt Max, or at least watching our short videos, is something you should do before you start. Realizing familiar faces will be much more interesting and make the world in the film more convincing. However, a weak point of the story is that we all know before the end. That's right, we know that no matter what happens, Furiosa would still live on, be strong, and become a cool heroine. As for the new characters, the audience is also confused by their emptiness when facing the time in the future. Therefore, the film was put in such a difficult position from the beginning when it was forced to make the journey of leading the result become interesting. And unfortunately, the old warfare that George Miller took over this time marked the end of Fuel when it gradually drifted back to the end of the second season. Events became romantic when Dementis, Feo, and Furiosa got stuck in the middle. I felt the tension rise very high in the middle of the film, in the battle for the life and death of the heroine, with a character named Jack. But as time went by, the scale of actions and surprises decreased, making the final battle a bit depressing. This is partly because the story is quite long, and although it is told along the way to clarify each development process of Furiosa, the quality of each chapter is not the same, making the whole story a bit vague. Not to mention, although there is enough time, the development process of the main character is quite basic. A conservative motif is nothing strange on the screen. In conclusion, although not many percent of my love for Furiosa is due to the version of Charlie's Theron, I have to give compliments on the performance of the young star Anya Taylor-Joy. She doesn't need many words, but only with her eyes that can speak. The audience can still understand all the emotions of Furiosa, from anger, despair, to empathy. This is also supported by a layer of makeup that makes the actor's eyes stand out perfectly. Anya successfully portrayed a girl who is tough enough to survive on the street, but still shows her weakness deep in her mind. Her main focus this time is Dementors, a homeless version, and lack of leadership of Immortan Joe also has an appearance that is not bad. Chris Hemsworth and his charming humor make me immediately hate the cruelty of this character, although sometimes he makes quite incomprehensible decisions. The plot is a scene related to Furiosa's broken arm, which if you watch, you will realize that it is not a role that Donnie plays for the god after he has done everything he can. On the other hand, because the words of the actresses, Anya Taylor-Joy and Chris Hemsworth, 
are all talents that we don't need to doubt. In short, the film is still crazy enough, full of action, and is a not-so-bad story. I really like the ending for the character Dementors, and it is because of this creative scene that after stepping out of the closet, the other points have not moved much. The film is full of the aesthetics of one of the most different Hollywood directors. The old zoom in, zoom out, quickly face with a world that is just popular, but also very messy. Furiosa is still super cool, and the pain she went through is not new, but still easy to empathize with and convincing enough to turn this character into a warrior. That must be enough to satisfy the fans. The video may end here. Why do I want to save the rest to talk about a topic that is being discussed and may be a direct influence to the experience of watching the film? Let's take a look at the trailer. Do you think it's any different from the rest of Mad Max? The answer is that the film uses a lot of detailed scenes. That's right. If we don't count the first three episodes in the era of pre-developed computer effects, there is a fact that 80% of the scenes in Part 4 Fury Road are real action scenes. Therefore, the film seems to be more dense, and the atmosphere with the audience at that time has completely disintegrated this way of making the film. Of course, this is not entirely true, and it was the people in the crew who also shared the number of green screen scenes used, which was no less. Then, impressed by a real firework, I accidentally pulled the opinion of Furio to the left. Currently, just go online and search the word Furiosa CGI, you will find that there are quite a few plays talking about this issue. Some only express surprise when they see the film in another frame, but there are also more difficult people who criticize that the film is too fake, too many false details, and even consider it a fake. In fact, this scene depends on the taste of each viewer. But if a person like George Miller spent many years to make a fake work, it's hard to believe. On the other hand, lovers say that the director deliberately used CGI in a fake way to make the film more realistic creating a non-physical but very eye-catching action style in his own way. Although it sounds a bit counterproductive, in fact, this is not the first time George Miller has done this. Among the two parts of Mad Max, the Australian filmmaker also has another work called 3,000 Years of Longing. This is exactly an example of his unparalleled style. The intricate scenes with extremely eye-catching colors, blatant, straight, and fake, have a world that looks like a fairy tale, but it can't be said that it's not beautiful. Because of the lack of focus, the audience still only remembers his aesthetics through Mad Max. Therefore, I personally think that it's not that George can't reproduce the reality of Fury Road. It's simply that he doesn't want that. He wants to keep his spirit this time, not to be stripped away, real or fake, but to be burnt out in the craziest way. And to be fair, I think the film is still quite good. In conclusion, if you are waiting for a second Fury Road, Furiosa may disappoint you a bit because it lacks a bit of grandeur. And if you have watched 3,000 Years of Longing, you will know why. Years of longing and familiar with George Miller's new kind of solitude. Its wildness even makes us feel more attracted. Each person's taste and ugliness may depend on each person's perspective, so please have your own opinion. And that's all we want to say about the story of the heroine Furiosa. If we reveal more, it will become a spoiler, so the video will stop here and you can experience it yourself. I still vote for the movie worthy to enjoy outside the box, because IMAX will be more wonderful. In fact, looking at the lonely cars on the dead end lane has never been boring. And now, goodbye and see you in the next videos of V Film. May the force be with you. I'm gonna make him an awfully good man. Play as time goes by. Hasta la vista, baby.